Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be touching on a topic that I feel like it's been years <laughs> since it's happened, but it's really only been like two months, a month and a half. I'm going to be talking about how I passed the Odyssey PA exam recently. I did pass in October of 2020. I took it September 28th and I found out I passed October like 8th, I want to, yeah, 6th or the 8th, I think it was the 8th. So about two weeks later, no, I mean a little over a week later and it was very surreal. I just immediately moved on to the next one. So I didn't think too much of it, but in the in between I have right now and I have time today to do it, I wanted to do a quick video just talking about how I passed. So a quick rundown of what I'm using. I am using an Erin Condren notebook and really cute script stickers I picked up from Sarah Marie to take my notes in. I also use Zebra Mild Liners, which is a really, really good brand. And I use Muji pens to write in. So it's a very pretty looking spread, right? But you, you'll see right now, it does change a bit. Um, I do use Becker. I used the Becker CPA review. And then I also had the final review for free. I kind of wish I would have used it a bit more looking back because I feel like this would have helped me feel a lot more secure with how comfortable I was with the material. I did think, I think I did one section. Hold on. Yeah, I did one section of a pretty good amount of information. So I wish I would use it more, but it is available with the Becker bundle. And I'm going to first show you how I started off with the studying because I did not have my textbook right away. So when I started studying, I wanted to get kind of stick to my schedule and not wait for the textbook to come in because I had taken and studied for it about a year and a half before and I was fairly comfortable with the material at the beginning so I wasn't a big deal. I wasn't following along in the textbook with the lecture and the lecturer, lecturer um, <laughs> from Becker. So here you can see I did have a pretty good outline set up. I knew what they were talking about. It wasn't brand new information to me, so I was able to kind of follow along. And then the way the way it was split in Becker is by chapter, and then in each chapter there are certain modules. So um, Audit had six chapters, and then each chapter had a varying amount of modules. The modules weren't too long. I'd say the lectures were maybe around 30 minutes each. There were a couple where you knew it was going to be big because the lecture was an hour long and there were like 45 multiple choice questions afterwards. So you can tell which ones mattered or the material was more heavy. But anyway, for my notes, I basically would, I think at this point I did not have my tech. Let me check. Oh, did I have my textbook? I could have sworn I did not have my textbook. Okay, that's a little embarrassing to be that wrong <laughs> with the beginning of the video, but I did have my textbook. So the way I did it was I would not simultaneously follow along with the lecture and take notes. I would take notes afterwards. I can't believe I forgot. It's been a, it's been a few months. It's been a few months. You'll be amazed how sometimes you will easily forget things that you do when it comes to studying for this exam. So anyway, for the lectures in Becker, you have the video where it's the text like on the film, I mean on the screen, and the person speaking, a lot of the case with Audit, it was um, Tim Garrity. He would kind of have certain things highlighted by automatically by like the computer and then things written in in like what is it called comic sans font like by the computer as well so the way i would like mainly take notes is by following what they were doing in the lecture so i wasn't like rewriting down information i was kind of reading it more and again i had seen this material before and i feel like this process helps me more because i feel like i'm following the process better instead of like playing catch up or kind of panicking of trying to do my own notes while they're talking about the material I think this helped me kind of grasp it the best because it's a lot of theory and I think I would just, for me the thing is stressing. I'm an easily 
stressed person so if I was trying to take notes on my own it would be hard and if I try to take like full notes after the lecture I feel like I would never get through the material in time it would just take way too much way too much time so I would just highlight along with what they highlighted and then I would write things down of course so more highlighting sometimes they don't do anything like here you can see they highlighted like a couple of things down here and then like one thing of writing issuers public companies that sort of thing this is a good example here instead of okay so whenever they're writing in the in the screen something they might move on pretty quickly afterwards so i would come up with my little shorthand like here's the triangle which stands for change like like in math and i would use that instead of writing out the word change because then i would have to pause the lecture write down some this and then something else that would come along like right afterwards and then like before they skip to the next page and if they go to the next page i have to pause it go back i guess trying to keep as much flow was a big deal to me with this material if I was trying too hard to do too much at once, it would just be too it would just be too uh, overwhelming for me. More highlighting. More highlighting. Here we go. This is what I was thinking of to show. With a lot of the heavily based theory material in audit there were a lot of acronyms to memorize and with the acronyms they had these little circles on the side where you fill it in as they're talking about it here this does not make you memorize by any means i never memorized this but i feel like making this just transition like just flow as well as as i as i could get it to flow if that makes any sense with what they were talking about in the lecture that helps me more like i was kind of making the connections here and seriously, multiple choice questions and muscle memory is how you build on what you're trying to make a foundation of here. So it's a lot of building. It's studying for the exam is not like studying for regular school for me. So it was a lot more about studying smarter, not harder. That's probably the best thing I could do to explain it. So a lot of that, a lot of, again, if they're writing down notes, I would do my little shorthand if needed. I think they even wrote out like the word first here, but I just put first like with number form. I'm just going through the first chapter just to see. A lot of report samples here. And you're gonna see, I did go all out for this in the notes because I knew how heavily tested this would be. And that's just based on my prior experience from a year and a half before taking it. Back with the charts, I mean the reports. And then even here, it goes into more detail. And then stuff like this, I would, I would feel like it'd be really good to look back and read. I can't promise you I did during the actual final review, but this would definitely be something I recommend. I think I did do it. I think I did it not with, not with the reports though, with the, um, well not with the public opinions, with it was more with SARS and SSAE statements of standards on attestation engagements. That's what I would, that's when I would go and look at this, like when it was like a compilation, a review, a, oh, what's the word? Compilation, review, preparation, right? Yeah, preparation of the financial statements. They had these charts and these helped a lot too. Goodness, there's a lot of material. <laughs> Summaries, also good. Is this still chapter one? Yep, audit one. Reports, lots of samples. The pass keys helped a lot, I think. The pass keys were something where if that was anything I would write down, like in my notes, if I'm doing a multiple choice question that when I click on see lecture, I see that there's a pass key there, I would write down the pass key for sure. So instead of flipping through the textbook a bit more, let's go to the actual notes I took. 
So with chapter one, because I knew how heavily tested it was going to be and how much I needed to be confident in the different parts of each report, the different structure, what an explanatory paragraph was, what an emphasis of matter and other matter paragraph were in regards to talking about issuer versus non-issuer, all of that made me write, and not just that, motivation, you will not be motivated by the end. You must be disciplined with this stuff or else you're not going to get it done. That's the best. I was so motivated in the beginning and by the end I was dragging myself to study. So unfortunately the motivation does go away no matter how much you want to be a CPA or how much you want to pass these exams on the first try or something. So at the beginning I was also motivated. That also helped me write really good notes for what's a big part of the foundation of audit. So here you can see I'm talking up here about the purpose of an audit. Um... The difference between a financial statement audit and an internal control audit, how a issuer has to have both, it's called an integrated audit, you need to get reasonable assurance. If you remember anything about audit, you remember those words reasonable assurance, they're very much highly, highly talked about in the exam. And then here you can see I started getting a bit more of trying to follow a lot of the textbook in regards to doing charts. So I did a lot of charts um, for this one. It just helped me see like what the difference in each type of opinion was with what part of the report. So the language is a big deal between issuer and non-issuer. Here unmodified is a non-issuer and then unqualified is an issuer. So that sort of thing um, I wouldn't say I was an expert on. I feel like I got it. I got it at some point, like kind of near the end of chapter like two, maybe. So like even here, like I'm talking about non-issuer, but I have unqualified like here. Like I should have probably put something to emphasize like this is issuer, this is non-issuer instead of just saying non-issuer. Because this is the setup for non-issuer. Auditor's responsibility and and all of that, that's different. That's different from an issuer report. Here, here's where I get in. Okay, this is better. Module 4 is better because here I have issuer, here I have non-issuer. So that helps. So lots of charts. Even more charts here. Again, motivation plays a big factor <laughs> into how you start with this. I was comfortable with audit because... Oops, you can see the rug. I have this little placemat to kind of give a better looking background. Um, with audit, I was pretty comfortable with the material at the beginning, so... It did help. I think this helped me a lot, getting the foundation strong because I was motivated. Audit's probably going to be, in the, long, in the long run, my favorite section since it's so theory-based, and I feel like I'm better with that than with the calculations. Quick water break. And I think for maybe, maybe reg. There'll be some theory with like all the different tax rules or something. I don't know, but audit really helped. I'm glad I took audit. I'm glad I took and passed audit first. Over here, this is what I started doing with the charts. I would put review summary of this, like what the summary was about on this page. A157, for example. I would go here. And then... 55, A157, I could immediately see this chart. So instead of me like mindlessly going page by page by page to just come across the chart and then think about it, I feel like writing it down helped me. When I was looking at these notes, like this was kind of like, like a link to the textbook. So again, it's all about like building like connection between the material and then just making those links on your own. Everyone does work differently. For me, I need to feel prepared. I need to try and not stress myself out. So I feel like writing things down helps with that. For others, they could use like the textbook PDF. They don't even need the physical textbook. And then they can study their hearts off for like four weeks and pass. So it all depends how like you feel you'll, I guess you'll feel you'll do best in the testing center. If you're very natural with this and you don't feel a lot of pressure, I'd say go for it, especially if you're young and out of school right away. If you have more experience and you're coming back to the studying after a break from it, it, it might be better to, to help yourself feel prepared. Just to 
that's what it comes down to, just preparing the best for the exam. Doesn't mean you're the smartest person at it. People get 99s and others would say you overstudy. You just need a 75 to pass. So it all depends. But anyway, going back to the notes. You can see here, I really did not take a lot of notes on one module. So module like module eight, I can guarantee was like at least 15 or 12 pages. One page here. Module nine, that's nothing. Reporting on a single statement. I think that was a fairly short. I think that was a fairly short module. Yeah, it was two pages, really a page and a half because the last one is multiple choice question. And that was just this much. So you don't need to basically rewrite the entire textbook in paper form with your hand because you will get yourself like your hand will get um, tense. What is it called? Jammed? Oh my gosh, cramped. It will get cramped up. <laughs> I can't remember the words. Um, Module 10, same thing. I think subsequent events was something I remembered pretty well. And then here, I would just, at this point, I was pretty comfortable and the, the modules were short. So I kind of just did, did that. Here with the progress test, I just left one sheet here blank. And then another page to review if needed. I didn't go back and do this, obviously. For me, with the multiple choice questions with audit, I didn't find myself writing things down as much. The only calculations involved were ratios. I'm trying to find where the ratios were. I feel like they were, yeah, ratios. Even then, I didn't write down calculations. I just did them on a calculator on the laptop. So overall, not a lot of notes there for calculating, which is why I feel like that helped me. It just helped me so much the way I studied. I needed to study for the material for audit. I wish every, every exam was like that because I'm dreading FAR and REG and BEC and all of those. It's just going to be a pain. Um, what else? What else? Progress tests. Yeah, I didn't need to write down too much with audit. The biggest thing was just drilling the multiple choice questions in Becker. What also helped me was make my notes look pretty. You can see here I color coordinated by chapter and the way I made them look pretty without like taking too much time you know, like sitting, stopping the, the video lecture or stopping the multiple choice question uh, clock, writing something down and then highlighting it here, highlighting it there or something like that, which isn't a bad thing. But for me, I just needed to stick to the schedule and that schedule did not account for that, like in my studying time. And I didn't study for like five hours a day or anything. I studied for maybe two on average. So what I would do is I would just highlight the top line underneath the module sticker and then the bottom like that and that kind of just added some color to the otherwise mundane <laughs> notes basically so you can see here what i also started doing was making outlines and i've talked about this before i've talked about this both with i think my final review videos of audit and my study with me videos of audit Doing this outline, again, it's all down to linking the information, connecting everything because audit flows really well like that and audit is like begging you basically to connect the information like that. So these outlines really helped me a lot. I don't remember, when did I start doing it like that? See here how I was just doing like bullets? Here, specific areas of engagement risk. And I think around this time with all the different, with this chapter, chapter three, I think it was all about risk assessment, identifying, assessing, responding to risk, yeah. With all of that, I needed to, to split things up. It was just so much information. No matter how theory-based it is, which is my favorite kind of thing to get, uh, to get tested on, the information is so overwhelming, you need to do what, what, makes everything the building box connect best. So this outline form helped a lot. And I did stick to it, which is really good. So that is it for, for this video. I hope that kind of helps just hearing someone who's been through it recently, or like if you're watching this year later, like in the past year, talk about like the kind of structure of their studying. Becker, 
I really recommend. I did, however, get this um, complimentary, basically, through the ambassador program. When I was a college student, I did not have to worry about that, and I was able to be grandfathered into having the Becker Bundle unlimited, like it doesn't have an expiration once I opened and started using the program, so I did get lucky there. If your employer, however, does offer Becker as an option for studying material, I, I highly recommend it. It's popular for a reason besides, I mean, just because it's expensive doesn't mean it'll work, right? But I do think this worked well. Again, it's all about building on what you're starting with. And another final little tidbit for you would be looking here at the beginning at the beginning of what you're about to study and having an idea there of what you're getting yourself into. You're never going to feel prepared, like super prepared though. That's probably the hardest part about these exams is you're not going to feel prepared. You're going to just have to do your best, use your analytical skills, use your nerves and like energy in a good way and you will pass your exam, I promise. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like and to subscribe to my channel for future videos like this one. I'm so close to 150 subscribers. If you subscribed, I would really appreciate it. I just like seeing the even like 5, 10, 15, 20 <laughs> numbers. But anyway, I will talk to you on my next video and I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Bye everyone.